I've once heard someone say that there should be more romance stories between women in books, and I couldn't agree more. This year has been a whirlwind, and books have been my best friends. I've laughed and cried and learned many things, so I want to share with you some beautiful books this year. In books for 2020. Yeah, woo, we made it. Hi everybody, happy new year. 2020 is almost over. I hope you're all ending it calmly, more calmly than it was going and happier than when this year started. Everyone's saying it just flew by and that's so true because of all that was going on. And I'm so excited to keep going. This year was amazing for me because I started YouTube again and full like con like consistently every week I've been uploading for the most part and I, that's just been bringing me so much joy and I just really know I'm going to keep going and it's going to keep growing and everything is going to be amazing. Yes, 2021. I like that because it's like we won. And it's just 2021 because it's the first of this decade. It just feels like a very fresh start and I'm very excited about it. But 2020 was a lot. And in order to get myself through that, I read a lot of books. I typically enjoy reading so much, but especially this year because isolation, didn't have that many people to talk to or hang out or go many places. So, and I'm not in school anymore, I graduated. So I wanted to keep reading, but this time for my own pleasure. So I did that and I learned a lot. I feel like I learned more than I ever was when I was in school. So here I have some books to share with you. Woo. <laughs> These are the top 10 books that I have to recommend from this year. Oh, let's just jump right into it. So I'm not going in any particular order. Like usual, I'm just picking up what I see. So this first top book, let's talk about it. It's called Me Talk Pretty One Day and it's by Davis, David Solaris. So I'm gonna talk about actually two David Solaris books. So these are the first ones I ever read. This one was the first one. It's uh, it's kind of like about his life, sort of, sort of like a fiction inspired by autobiography. And it's so morbid and he's so sarcastic and funny. I really like this book. It talked about how this teacher going to traveling, spending time in Paris and, and just like, David Sedaris, I believe, is a gay man, so that it's all his protagonists are kind of like images of him. So gay men who are writers and very Mormon and sarcastic and clever and funny and also depressed. It's a nice read. I also liked Death by Finding. I like this one a bit more. It was diary style, so it's kind of like someone's diary entries, and I just like this. It. I read it at a very pivotal time, so I feel like this one stuck in my head a little bit more, but this one was the first one I ever read by him, Me Talk Pretty One Day. So I feel like this set a tone for David Sadar's books. And yeah, they're very similar. I feel like this is definitely the main character of both of these books seem either like the same person or like they are raised as brothers or something in the same family. Like these people are related. I really like how they write about their life and really capture themselves in a multitude of different stories and different avenues and ways. I think that's very creative and very cathartic. The next book that I have to share with you is Jonathan Livingston Siegel, the famous, fam famous, the famous book. This book is so cool. The photos in this book is just amazing. I really appreciate the photography in this book. And it's about a seagull called Jonathan and how they were ostracized in their life and they, because of their hobbies of wanting to fly. So 
it's just about a tale of someone who's a bit different embracing their uniqueness and actually having that work out for them and having them be like a gift to their community for that i really enjoyed this book it's a great book to read like in a day because it's very short and it has lots of pictures so it's very great for i would say a child to read slash adult to read it's great from any age so i'm excited to have like a child and have them read this book and inspire them definitely worth it jonathan livingston siegel i had so many people tell me to about read this book and i just decided you know what it's time it's time and i'm and i'm glad i read it this year there's a lot of trials this year obviously and in this book jonathan livingston siegel learns to really fly no pun intended with the obstacles around the obstacles that they were given in life and that's just very inspiring i love that awesome let's step away from fiction and um i started yoga school this year and i completed my first level woohoo yay so um, i've been reading a lot of yoga philosophies as was required for classes so um, i have two books here this is the first one it's the complete guide to yin yoga by apparently these are like the founders of yoga bernie clark and sarah powers i have never heard of them but yes so this is just like a guide a full-length guide of yin yoga the poses background cautionary tales different anatomy it's just it's a very good book if you love yin yoga if you want to learn more about yin yoga i highly recommend it I learned a lot. Yin yoga, if you don't know, it's just like the feminine aspect. You have yang and you have yin. Yin is feminine. So yin yoga is very slow and very, you sit in the poses for a long time and these poses are usually on the ground. You don't really stand up. So it's very restorative and very healing and calming. I love that. As a very fiery masculine person, I really like to balance with yin. So I hope to teach yin classes sometime soon and i really enjoyed the philosophy behind yin principles which is rajastic yang energy needs to be balanced with yin energy and yoga first started as yin because people did yoga so that can sit in poses to meditate for longer so being able to sit in down in, a, in like this type of pose will be able to like open up your hips so you can sit in meditation for like three hours straight in, in, in a resting easy pose. So that's where yoga came from. It came from yin and then through that the masculine adopted it. The masculine energies on this planet adopted it and kind of coerced it. So I think yin is very important to rebalance. So if you're into yoga, I highly recommend that one. This next one is called the cover like came off. I've used it so much. The Ancient Secret of the Flower of Life by Drew Malo Melchizedek. And I love this book. It's so amazing to learn more about sacred geometry and just to learn more about like alien culture and all the crystals, all the avenues that sacred geometry takes, which is every avenue of life is from sacred geometry. So it's really amazing just to read a book and study it on your own. I really highly recommend this one. I've heard about this book so often and I've heard Drew Malo Marquisedec's name in the spiritual community so much. So it's so nice to read their work and just get that first person perspective on what they have to say. Not everything I'm like, yeah, that's right. But mostly everything I'm like, awesome. I love it. It makes me just, it just makes me feel so good when I read this book. Boom, I just flipped to some pictures of the ancient Egyptians and I love Egypt. I love everything about Egypt. I think that they had so much wisdom and we really have so much more to remember from the way that they lived. And I hope, I know we're going to do that in 2021. I have part two to this and I'm very excited to crack onto that. Some things that I've learned, it's very geometric and like scientific sometimes. So I really appreciate that because I'm able to like conceptualize and work that Yang's side of my body, the right side, the right side of the brain. And I love it. I love it. I love it a lot. It has really inspired me to make my own sacred geometry for sure. Awesome. This is the flower of life. Now it shows you how to draw it. 
it's just amazing. So it's like a mix of history, science, anthropology, and spirituality. I love this book so much. The next book that I have to talk about is called Eternal Sunshine by Londrell. All that you're seeking is God, says that in the back. I love this book. It's a completely beautiful, inspirational piece of work. So Londrell is a musician and I've actually really loved their music. And a lot of the music that they have on Spotify and stuff is, is written like as poems in this book. So I find that really cool. Each poem is, well, they have like, a, towards the end, it's just like mostly poems or towards the middle rather, it's mostly just po straight poetry. But in between that, they usually have like an insight, a lesson, a uh, observation about humanity and then a, le a poem to go along with that. So it's, it's nonfiction, it's inspirational, it's part of self-help, but it's just so inspiring and it, to have it come from like a black man, this perspective, like a rapper, R&B singer. I just feel the soul through the pages. It's amazing. I've been wanting to read this for a while and I'm so glad I finally picked it up, picked it up. I'll read this poem, Black Girl Soul. I love everything about you. Your blackness is greatness. With the soul of a million suns, you inspire the happiest face. I love that. Next one is called black girl tone beautiful soul magical skin that's all you need to know boom so i love this it's just so uplifting especially if you're a black woman or man or anything you want to be i recommend this if you are a human it's it's perfect if you're feeling low um internal sunshine so especially during winter it's we need this dose of vitamin d via literature so <laughs> i really highly make, recommend you pick that up and then the next book i recently got for my aunt for christmas and i'm so happy that she gifted this to me because it's amazing it's called griffin and sabine the an extra extraordinary correspondence this is what it looks like and it's amazing because it has so much beautiful artwork in this so the whole thing is like these letters are being exchanged back and forth between two strangers and they're connected somehow and i love how i love the artwork first of all and then i love how there are actual letters in here after like postcards postcards and then they start getting fun because it's interactive so you can open it and then it's a letter and as like a millennial we i i hardly ever get a letter <laughs> so it's so it really does take you back and you take you to the story not back but take you into the story and make you feel like you're there and i love anything interactive i was a theater major in school so i love pretending and the story is so interesting too it's kind of like a mystery so i'm excited to learn more about the story it's very short as you can see it's a small little book you can read it in a day but it's really beautiful um my aunt actually read it for college so i was like wow this is like the coolest college book i've ever read i've ever seen but i love it it's so cool i can't wait for her to give me more co uh, the rest of the series because there's more to the series after this one and i'm just so impressed i really want to see where the story goes so i recommend this book if you're into romance fantasy art beauty on any level because the writing is just so lovely too um i highly recommend this book it's by nick batok bantok the next book is by eckhart tolle and it's called A New Earth, the classic Eckhart Tolle New Earth book, besides Power of Now, of course. This book is amazing. I've heard someone describe it like being like a psychedelic trip in a book, and I highly agree with that opinion. This book will just sh shatter your ego and just realign you really quickly. Eckhart Tolle has a very big gift when it comes to just like taking these spiritual concepts and making it easily digestible for anyone to understand and i believe we're creating a new earth now so this is a perfect inspo book to live our life by in 2021 it's just like it's it's a freaking psychedelic trip i'll tell you ending the ego ending time 
ending the illusion of space and separation and just coming into our oneness in the infinite abundance all around us. I have three more books to share with you. This next one is called Abduction to the Night Planet and this is by Mikhail Desmarquette and he's a Frenchman and not a writer but they have an extra extraordinary tale to tell so they wrote this book and it's about how they were abducted and taken to the planet Yauva. Um, the T is silent but it's spelled T-H-I-A O O V A or B A, but the B is a V. And um, in the Old Testament, the angel that like God's like one of God's best angels called Yehuva, I think. And they did a lot of stuff like they gave Moses the Ten Commandments. I don't, maybe I'm not getting that right, but they were very um, quintessential. I just realized I'm wearing one earring. <laughs> I took it off and didn't remember put it back on. I meant to do this. It was purpose on purpose. But anyway, um, yeah, so apparently like this, these beings, this planet has come into our history before and they've been helping humanity. They take like someone to come to their planet every like 10,000 years or something. And the planet is just amazing. As someone who identifies as a star seed, I was just so enthralled about this journey, about this journey and all the information that they have to say about what it's like to travel to another planet, what the aliens, alien people are like and their technology and just their philosophies on life. It's so amazing. Some stuff that sticks out in my head is just like the uh, people on Iowa were like, what's wrong? Is he sick? Like he seems so sad and he was and he thought they were seemed so happy to see him but really the people there just always are happy and they always just have a big smile on their face he described it as as if they're always hearing good news constantly all the time they just have like a glow about their face and love in their eyes in a smile and he thought that was because of him and they realized why is he not smiling <laughs> and just little things about food the way that gravity works um, they don't they don't age um, everyone's the same age on that on this planet and they live for so long and then when they want to die they either commit suicide or they die like of natural causes i thought that was interesting they also are hermaphrodites so they have male and female parts i think that is incredible because i believe trans and people who just have a duality to them like in gender fluid people queer people in general have this like duality or embracing of the duality to them and i think that's a sign of spiritual evolution and spiritual intelligence so i really enjoyed this book if you're a star seed or if you're interested in space at all and you want to learn the tale of what it's like to go to this wonderful planet i really have to really recommend you read this and i hope they can turn this into like a movie it's amazing I know a lot of people think that he made this up and he's just like a crazy man. But even if he's a crazy man, look at this imagination on this dude. He deserves it, bruh. He, he got it. He won. The imagination on this is amazing. Either way, I'm blown away. So, recommend this one. It's so inspiring. The next book I have to share with you is called Wheels of Life. And it is a book about ch the chakras, the seven chakras. And I read this for yoga class and I'm so happy I did because this is just an amazing book. Um, if you're spiritual in, it, in any way and you just want to learn more about the spiritual system of the body, read this. Chakras are so important and knowing how to work with your chakras and knowing how to like discern what's happening in your body will allow you to heal so much faster and I think we all want to be healed. So my favorite chakra to read about was the heart chakra. Just warm my little heart reading about it and i know i'm going to incorporate a lot of this information into my classes into my sessions with clients so i'm very excited to just read this and i want to get more books because i know there's so much information about chakras out there it would be so amazing to like read a poetry book just for your chakras each section is a different poetry associated to that Maybe I'll do that. That sounds really fun. I also want to like use this book to inspire amuse me making music for each chakra. So I don't know, stay on the lookout for that. Those are, these are the nine books. And the last book I have to share with you is, I actually don't have it because I gave it away for Christmas to my aunt. The first one's called, there are two poetry books by 
Mark Anthony, and I know that's like a musician, but no, not that Mark Anthony, a poet. And they are a very great poet. They write about love so beautifully, so magically. Um, I think everyone should be loved the way that they love their wife or their partner. So the first one's called Love Lines. And I will like put the images up here of what the books look like. The first one's called Love Lines. The second one is called, I'm blanking, Love Something. Um, I'm gonna put it here, but both of these books are amazing. I read that to my mom and she loved it so much. She brought like three cop, three sets of his work and I, she's gonna gift them to me. So I'm not too worried that I don't have these copies anymore because I know I'm gonna get more. And it's just so amazing giving out pure love poetry to someone a family member at that you just it merely makes you feel good so i'm i'm really happy that i was able to give those to her i heard someone describe from other another libra on the internet here i heard someone describe his work as how a libra wants to be loved every libra as you know if you know libras are ruled by justice and beauty and balance very beautiful intelligent compassionate beings that you know physically look beautiful too and they really value love they love it so um this is a the, how he loves his wife is how every libra wants to be loved so that's why i gave the books to my aunt who's a libra because she's amazing and i just want her to feel all the love in the world and i want you to feel all the love in the world too those are all the books i have to recommend to you for 2020 overall the books that i chose all have inspired me in different ways all have taught me something incredible that i definitely will take into 2021 I thank you for watching this video and happy new year everyone. Bye.